Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, SAP SD and ABAP League Support. One of our subscribers requested to share video about the year-end activities takes place in SAP SD area. Now let's get started. So there are few year-end activities takes place and uh, this is what we do in my project and in your project in your company you might follow different event activities for different objects and please do let me know if i don't cover that in this video the first object is that number range and it's for both sales document and uh, billing documents the transaction codes that we use for number ranges bn01 it's an arvo let me show you in system okay let me log in Okay, the first key code is VN01. Okay, so in VN01, we can see the number ranges available now for SD documents. You see SD documents. That means SD documents includes order, delivery, and invoice. For all of these three uh, objects, transactions, we use this T code VN01. And remember that this activity should be done in each and every system. It's a client specific changes. We can't save these changes directly, but if you want to save the changes into any of the TR, okay, it's a workbench TR only. So what we need to do, we need to click the ranges in the menu, then transport. The problem with this that it is saying this, this message, if you read, if you understand that it will carry all the number ranges available in the system it won't carry the number ranges for which we have done the changes so it will carry everything to the tr and it from tr it will go to development quality quality to production right so this activity should be always done in production directly only we can't transport it if you transport it will create some mess and one more T code that we will use is SNRO. So SNRO is the objects for number range. So for sales document types, our deliveries, our billing document types, the number range is object is RV underscore Belag. So this is a basic config about this object, how this object should react, or how many number ranges every time the standard system can uh, keep it in memory. Something config we can do here. Okay, so buffering, no buffering. So if you see here, buffering is there. That means every time system will accumulate some number ranges in the buffering. And here it see we see different options like a main memory buffering, parallel buffering, something like this. Okay. Yeah, so these are the two T codes, VN01 and SNRO for this number range. And uh, number ranges is not suggestible to transport via TR. It should be done independently in the system only. No transport. Okay, and one more important table that we should remember about this number range is NRIB. So NRIB is a number range interval table. So whatever we see in VN01 T code, those data we see in NRIB as well. So whatever we see here, those information here we can see as well. So RV underscore BE LEG is the RV Belag is the number range object for sales documents. So NRIB is a backend database table. And this is the number range column and this is the ranges from and to. And this is the 
status is nothing but the current number created for this particular range. And the last column specifies whether it's external number range or internal number range. If it is external number range, then system will uh, allow us to define the new number range. If it is internal means, system will propose the number range automatically. So this is about this number range. So table is 10 or IV. So this is the first activity that we do every year end. Second activity is to extend the factory calendars. So this is one of the important number ranges. I mean uh, activity, year and activity. The factory calendar will be used in several places. Customer master level will be, we will use that. Shipping point level, route level, right? Sales arc level. So many places. So many places we will be using this number ranges. So we should always verify the number range. Sorry. Uh, Factor calendar, okay. Factor calendar can be used in several places, right? And every year end, we should verify that whether any of the factor calendar is going to expire. If it is going to expire, then we should extend it for till how many years? That we can discuss with our business and extend it accordingly. If they say that extend this factor calendar for five years, do that. For some other, extend it for ten years means let's do that. So whatever they confirm us, we should do accordingly. The transaction code to access factor calendar is SCAL, S-C-A-L. So in SCAL, we have three options, right? Public holidays, holiday calendar, factor calendar. Like VN01. So VN01 also, it system won't propose TR when you save the object. It will propose TR. When you go into the ranges, let me show you one more time. VN01. Okay, so we should click the ranges, then only transport option should be enabled. And if you transport, it will carry everything in the system. Similar way, same thing, Spectre Calendar also. Factor Calendar also, if you the menu, calendar, transport. If you select this, what it is saying? It is saying that system will carry every data in the system related to factor calendar so even though we might created one new factor calendar or we might modified something existing new existing calendar whatever changes we do still system will carry everything in the system to the tier so in this case also there is a risk so this is also should be done in the production system directly okay scale is the t code This call is the T code, and there are some tables are there related to factor calendar. That is TFACD, TFACS, TFACT. Let me check one by one. Okay, if I go to the table TFACD, TFACD, and if I execute, I will see this is the factor calendar ID, and uh, this is the valid from valid to. So in your system, in your project, if you have hundreds of factor calendars are there, and if you want to verify which is going to expire, simply we can use this table TFACD and see which is going to expire this year. Accordingly, we can extend that, and we can see here which holiday calendar ID has been assigned to this factor calendar wise, and who created the user, and the date, and when the when if any changes happen on the factor calendar. We can see that uh, when change has been happened, what time, right? So we can see all the information TFA CD table. There is one more table called TFA CS. Here also we can see that some other information here, right? And one more is TFA CT. TFA CT. So it will display the Factor calendar along with text. Okay, let me mention the language here as English and execute. And we can see that 
द नेम ऑफ द फैक्टर कैलेंडर राइट सो दिस सेकंड ईयर एंड एक्टिविटी दैट वी विल परफॉर्म एंड थर्ड व्हाट वी विल डू इज दैट प्राइसिंग कंडीशन रिकॉर्ड एक्सटेंशन प्राइसिंग कंडीशन रिकॉर्ड एक्सटेंशन validity periods basically extending the condition records validity period will be taken care by business only so in my project business only will maintain the condition records for those i mean they will maintain the condition records and uh, they will do the valid from valid to validation everything they will do only but so in my projects why we are doing this validation is that we need to cross verify that any of the condition types key combination condition records is going to expire or not if it is going to expire then we should intimate business so if we don't intimate business then what will happen is that business will raise a ticket to us saying that some condition type is missing or not determined in the invoice or order the reason for this is that so the condition record has been expired so there is no valid condition record available according to the pricing date that's why it's expired it's expired behavior only so there is no issue from support end but still to avoid the unnecessary tickets in our queue okay that's our activity right so we should educate the user also to make sure that you should do that activity and we should verify those condition records and try to extend it if anything going to expire okay it's just an uh, Avoiding the tickets in our queue, basically, this is the intention of this year-end activity: pricing condition records valid from valid to extension. Okay, the third one is that suppose if our system are connected to APU system. Okay, in some other videos, I will detail explain about APU. APU is one more supply chain management system where the stock of the product will be maintained okay so whenever ecc system is connected to apo system then the stock the stock won't be validated or maintained in our ecc system the stock will coming from apo system only so apo means advanced planning optimization okay so the planning and the stock maintained from apu system only so in apu system there is one event activity that is time stream id update for each and every time stream ids time stream id validation so this time stream id also will be maintained for every year wise so this one also we should verify and if anything going to expire then we should inform business if business doesn't have access then we should get an a, a special approval from our manager and the business to get a production access then let's do this activity so basically in production we have only display access only we can't create or change anything in production we can display in sales order we can display billing document we can display delivery we can access all the tables database tables display only we have access no change access we have for that we should uh, raise a request and get a approval from business and our manager as well to get the special access in production after getting that access then we can do this time stream id extension okay suppose if we missed to extend the time stream ids then what will happen then you know right in the schedule lines tab in the order we have different shipping parameters are there L like loading date goods issue date transportation planning date material available date so these dates will be calculated wrongly and it will be become big big mess in logistics end so to avoid the unnecessary issues from business we should verify the stamp stream ids if anything is going to expire let's extend it okay so mainly these are the four year end activities that we follow in my project 
if you guys following something different in your project please do let me know in the comment section so that i will also learn from you that's it about this video we'll meet in the next video thanks everyone bye for now